But, uh, thank you, Josh, Paul, all the folks at Trader Kingdom and Ninja Trader. Um, I can tell you guys firsthand that uh, as a private, um, whatever they call it, call it closed beta eight uh, for Ninja Trader, I am very impressed with the new cloud-based software. Um, don't send me emails. Please ask me when they release because I have no idea. <laughs> but it's it's great software. So welcome everyone today. Today's the 22nd of September. Last couple of months have been wild to say the least. Welcome to market profile and the footprint charts are so powerful. We're going to show you in spades over the last month or two if you are new to the concept of auction market theory how powerful these tools have been. So I've got 16 slides. I want to try and go through these in about 20 minutes. So I'm going to go kind of fast. So I highly suggest, as I do to all students, um, to take a look through the video as many times as necessary. It will also be up on my YouTube channel. So I get a lot of questions from folks going, hey, Steve, who are you? And uh, let me just show briefly the website. <clears throat> Jump back to this is the home page. You guys are curious as to my bio, and you can just scroll down to the bottom of the page, click on my bio, follow me on Twitter, um, Facebook, all that fun stuff. This is the YouTube channel. I highly suggest taking a look at this at about uh, 20,000 views so far. It's actually a lot of good people with YouTube channels on uh, as some of my colleagues uh, that teach this, especially FT71. So you can take a look at all the videos. Um, they're very different um, as this particular video. They follow in a very different format. So, but the disclaimer disclosure today, we'll go ahead and get started on our 16 slides and then get into some live charts. Risk of loss and trading futures commodities can be substantial. So you should therefore carefully consider whether such trading is suitable for you in light of your financial condition. And keep in mind, guys, that this is a disclaimer, albeit uh, the attorneys love it. Uh, it's actually really good stuff because I've seen a lot of traders blow out accounts over the years because they have not put the time into learning uh, the concepts. So what we're going to talk about today as far as the biggest picture is understanding context. It is so critical to being able to trade correctly and to be able to frame what's going on in the market, okay? So is, is a whole bunch of emails I got um, on the course. This is the course here. It's 20% off until Sunday night. It's actually a really good course. I've had about 150 students go through it the last two years. You can click on check it out for yourself. So with that being said, let's get into this. After my shameless self-promotion, let's go through <clears throat> the overview. So we're going to talk a little bit about market profile and the footprint. What is it? How does it track order flow? Why does it give you an edge? I do understand that many of you have seen some of the intro to this stuff before. That's why I'm going to try and glaze through this in 20 minutes. So if I'm going too fast for some of you, this concept's new, please take my apologies. And I highly suggest that you read some of Jim Dalton's books. You can Google him or Amazon. He's written two books. Mind Over Markets and Markets and Profile uh, are both equally as good. Uh, Mind Over Markets 2007, a little more updated. So with that being the background, um, let's get into a little bit more of the overview. So the profile and the footprint chart, we're going to go through some live examples. I'll jump into the actual software. No, I cannot show NinjaTrader Beta 8, uh, but I highly suggest for either NinjaTrader 7 or if the Beta 8 is released sometime soon, guys can actually get a footprint plugin for that software called Jigsaw. It's Peter Davies' company. It's actually a really good plugin. Um, since I'll be um, a member of the Ninja Trader ecosystem coming up here real soon, I may have an actual uh, webinar on running the footprint in um, Jigsaw once it's released. So, but I'll go through <clears throat> um, you know, the footprint. Really the goal here is while you're observing the footprint is to determine whether trading activity is drying up, being facilitated, or increasing at pace of one form of price extreme or another. Okay. Let me double check here. All right, cool. So let me just double check this last announcement. So if just everybody's crystal clear, including me, 
Ninja Trader 8 beta was opened on Monday. So anyone can download it now. Okay. So uh, bonus today, we're going to talk a little about the volume, volume and balance indicators. This is a little built-in algo that is part of the footprint system um, for Market Delta, so you can actually have your own order and balance. The key thing is, is we'll go through some of the live examples of the order and balance. So, um, third and final, why market profile. Um, footprint charts play a critical role in the seven steps to consistent profitability. Um, for everyone that is not consistently profitable, I highly suggest you all find a mentor and be an absolute sponge. You know, I got my start in 96 as a trader and an options trader for Fidelity Investments' parent company, which is FMR in Boston. Um, I was lucky enough through the course of many years of Fidelity as an analyst and a, and a portfolio manager to trade for a lot of the big executives. And I saw the trading in futures markets was really the way to go. Decided to leave the two previous firms I worked for and start my own fund. Um, but most fortunate in how this is relevant to this discussion is I found a mentor. I'm in New York City and we're starting up our fund. I actually had a lot of common with, with uh, BMW Motorsport at the time, but a Goldman Sachs futures trader was actually a market profile and a tape reading uh, footprint expert. He introduced me to the concept. Um, he mentored me through many years of 06 through 08 when I was first learning this concept. And I was floored that you could gain this much insight into what's, what's truly going on instead of watching a time and sales tape just ripped by and regardless of filters you may have in you can't see really what's going on so we'll be able to do that um, and most importantly is that hopefully it'll give everyone watching this or however many times it takes to watch this um, it'll empower you with the ability to understand context okay so with that being said let's talk just briefly I'm gonna not gonna read all, all this stuff so I'm just gonna glaze real quick through this and we'll go into some market profile and we can jump into um, the software which uh, will show us what went on today. So if you're not familiar with market profile, really the objective is to show traders where value is being established, a value where a high or a value where a low. This is where most of the trading is taking place. So one of the best things about the value area um, is the bell-shaped curve you oftentimes will see, and I'll show you in a couple of slides as well, um, to see where the, the meat, if you will, of the volume is being executed. That is critical to understanding big picture context. So whether you're looking at a profile on a daytime, a week, or a month, I'll show all three, um, and you know, some are condensed, some are larger, but it's going to give you a, a better feel for what's been going on. We all know that the market spent a whole bunch of time over the last um, 16 months, you know, bouncing underneath um, and correcting, then coming back, not really truly getting able to um, rally out. And then we just absolutely cratered into uh, the 1933 area. So I'll show a lot of that on both the composite so we can see the higher and low volume nodes you guys have maybe heard in the past. Um, but the big takeaways from market profile is you want to find out where the responsive trade is coming. Okay. So there's a whole bunch of scenarios. You guys can certainly read this at your leisure. And, and by the way, on the last slide before I forget, um, I was going to be in my email. So if you guys have any questions on any of this, more importantly, if you want the slides from today, I saved them to a PDF, about 16 slides. And I'll email them to you. So, but you have to send me an email to ask for the slides. And um, you know, I'll be doing that probably for, let's just say the next two weeks is a window, okay? Because I'm not going to read all this stuff. So the key thing with any type of responsive or initiative selling is the difference between whether it is other time frame players stepping into the market to try and take us out of a particular balance area we've been in or if it is just response as far as initiative above that in any buying market drops back down into the range zigzags or bounces if you will within that range the initiative or the trend type day volume is the most important thing 
to recognize in market profile the difference between the two. Now, it would easily take me an hour just to explain the difference between the two, but just know that that is the primary goal of understanding market profile. It's to frame the market, to be able to look inside that frame and see what is going on in the auctioning process. And that is being able to determine what players, if any, uh, are active. Now, obviously, looking at the last month, other time frame players have been absolutely active and they have thrown this market into a tailspin. Yes, the algos have been going nuts and, you know, but there's been a lot of volume and, you know, it's great. But more than ever, um, traders absolutely have to be prepared as far as using the right tools like these two that we're going to talk about to gain the context and the big picture of what's going on in the market. Critical to the understanding of the auctioning process. So we've seen a lot of initiative selling over the course of the last three weeks that we've just sailed down into this area. So um, <clears throat> these are the different scenarios. There's a lot more than just five, but these are the basic ones. So market opens in scenario one uh, above the value area. In this particular case, let's just say it's the value area of yesterday. Okay, it's just not something that took place today, but I'll go through and analyze what went on today so you can put all this stuff in, in an experience with what's going on. But the market opens above it, um, you know, and is able to hold the value area high. Thus, potentially initiative buying is coming in above this area. So if it trades within this value or it falls back down in, you have anywhere between a 68% rule, which has stats that are nowhere near as good as that, um, that says that we could traverse the entire value area if we spend enough time above the value area high, break into the value area, um, and then given what the context has been every time we broke into that value area from the previous four or five days or more, um, tells us what the context of what potentially could happen if we break back inside the value area. So whereas in scenario two, <clears throat> same thing, market opens above the value area, but then begins to trade um, for two or more consecutive brackets. In my case, my brackets start off with D bracket. Bracket's nothing more than a 30-minute candle, folks, but it's broken down into a time price opportunity, and it's looked at in an actual alphabetic letter value, okay? So then you just reverse the first two scenarios, and you get come up with the next two. So same thing. What's the market going to do? Is it going to bounce inside of a given range or the value area? Is it going to break below it and possibly see initiative selling? come into the marketplace, you know, again, a lot of those other big time frame players, <clears throat> or is it just going to trade within like scenario five? So that's just maybe enough to be dangerous on market profile. Let's take a look at the software now, okay? Okay, here's the profile for today. This is a session two DTNIQ feed data um, showing what took place today. So it's only New York, um, what they call day session trading time. Okay. So if you split the charts out, <clears throat> you can see in 30 minute bars, right? So if you just want to view this in a, a 30 minute candle, this is how today looks. Okay. A lot of times it's easier for folks when they're seeing the profile for the first time to split out the charts. So as you can see, we open in D bracket, right? So for the first hour, 9.30 to 10.30 New York time, Eastern time, we're auctioning to build the red bar. This is the initial balance, okay? When we move over, anytime there's a, a, a O or a zero, whatever you want to call it, that's where we're starting off the opening print of the next bar. And then we will either rotate or up to form the initial balance. You can see that once that's formed, we open up F bracket coming into the noon hour in New York. We broke both. Uh, below that, and then we dropped significantly from that point. Now, in the context of the ridiculous volatility that we've had over the last three weeks, this is not that much of a drop, right? But what it's telling us is that if you look at the previous days, as you can see over here um, in this area, I'm circling it here. I'm not going to bring the drawing tools out. I'll just circle it so you don't have to erase anything. 
So um, in this particular area, you can see how we formed um, a pretty solid on the way up naked POC or NPOC on both the volume red bar and uh, or the TPO red bar and the volume brown bar kind of mixed together here. But this is for this particular day. This becomes an important point, and it did hold us um, as we drop down. So when you're looking at the markets uh, from the standpoint of a profile, you can see here we had double TPOs on the low. And, you know, there's so many nuances that I could talk ad nauseum about on this. Um, and that's why I encourage you to, you know, watch a, another video of mine on YouTube if you wish or, uh, you know, dig deeper into it with the CBOT's uh, market profile, which is like a 394-page study. You can read any of Dalton's books. He's got an excellent YouTube channel as well. Give you much more, and Dr. Kepler does too, by the way, guys. So much more comprehensive um, overview beyond just me touching on the surface here. But just in the interest of time, um, this is the profile. So there's a lot you can glean from the profile. And if I condense this down, and maybe hard to see, I know the screen doesn't refresh as quick, so I'll go a little slower. Um, but with um, and you could see how we just dropped down, and the market's really paid very good attention and, and really have seen um, a lot of the movement off of the big levels that were built in the profile. Now, just to take the discussion a little bit further, there's just the volume you're seeing from the 24th of August to now as far as the profile. Um, you can see that I expand the volume out greatly um, on the current day. Um, but it's maybe not as easy to see the volume that's built inside the profile. This is the actual volume of executed um, orders as a aggregate volume um, inside there. But it's you know it's very helpful to frame what's going on. Um, there also is significant volume and significant profiles um, from much further back uh, that can become just as important. But you can switch the profile um, to anything. You can look at it in a weekly, which is right here. Um, you can look at it in a monthly. Okay. So this is a monthly profile. Again, I'm just going to make this smaller. So for the purposes of um, just showing broadly what's going on, you can see how we spent many months you know, bouncing back and forth. This data cuts back to the 15th. We can actually go back almost 3,000 individual days with my data from DTN. So looking at, um, you know, it just tells you a lot. There's a ton to be um, taken from what's going on with these different types of auctionings. And um, so it, it's, it's purposeful for that. So get out of this. Drop this back down. All right, let's talk about the footprint next. And this is a five tick reversal. So, you know, as you can see from the time at the bottom, we're only going to be able to go back and see this from um, approximately three o'clock, but I'll, I'll squeeze it in here. But we'll go ahead and talk about this because this is really the, what I like to call a fine tuner of the execution. So if we jump back to PowerPoint <clears throat> footprint, what's the benefits of a bid ask footprint? It tracks water flow in the aggregate. So essentially combining price with total volume, <clears throat> and it gives accuracy for and transparency of seeing what's going on. So um, notice it is sensitive to whatever you set it up. Uh, most prefer some sort of tip reversal, a point in figures. Mine is a 5 PNF. I often get asked why that. You can use any time frame you want. But I feel that either a four, five, or six, in some cases even a seven with all the volatility we've had recently, price, point, and figure, it's basically showing you that if we can't get a five or six tick reversal, whatever time frame you set up on reversal, um, that's telling us a lot about the power of that particular move. Okay. So the bottom line of all this is that you can execute with greater precision. Gain confidence, filter the noise, right? Time and sales, think all that stuff flying by the time and sales screen in the past, right? And looking at the volume in the aggregate. So improved transparency and overall better understanding of context are the important things. So I get a lot of questions on order flow, okay? 
I really feel that this is the missing link for many traders. And essentially it refers just to, you guys can read this, how orders are coming into the market, how they're being filled, whether executing at the offer on the bid. Um, it's the dual action at the most micro level. I like to call that fine tuner, which you'll hear in some of my other videos. So assessing order flow in real time can tell traders how the trade is being facilitated in any direction. Just think, initiative versus responsive move. Okay. Key concept in AMT, order flow patterns is revealed by any footprint chart. Again, it's just market delta. The jigsaw plugin is just as good. It actually expands out on a lot of other stuff. Um, they're not traditional price patterns. So they're time and sales patterns. So traditional TNS windows data simply does not. Um, so, you know, this really diverges radically from traditional price patterns and or indicator-based analysis. So, um, and by the way, while we're going through this, if um, you guys didn't, or came in late and you uh, didn't hear from Josh, let me just jump back to that window. Feel free to ask questions as we roll through. And I'll start clicking on some of these questions as we get a little closer to um, the 5 o'clock hour. I want to try and keep this webinar to maybe 45 minutes, maybe 50 minutes, keep it tight. So that's order flow. So the market profile, the the support and resistance analysis, trend lines, and other macro big picture stuff, Fibonacci's, I mean, you can go on and on, fractals, um, you know, is really sort of the big picture analysis, in my opinion. That's sort of the where to trade. And the footprint excels in really um, You guys have seen all this, and we're just going to skip to this. So here's the bottom line. So <clears throat> what is the footprint? These are some older pictures. It doesn't matter the date. It doesn't matter the price. And heck, it doesn't even matter whatever futures contract uh, or uh, Forex instrument that you're using. The key thing is, is that the footprint works best on an aggregated market. This is why I far prefer trading futures over Forex, not just because of the tax advantages, it's because the CME, um, it's an aggregated order and a uh, volume. So it's not being fragmented with uh, a lot of what you see in Forex line. That's why I prefer trading the currency futures contracts or oil um, or any of the ES, DAX, NQ, YMs than I do trading the actual Forex pairs, uh, just my opinion. So, because the footprint doesn't really work in Forex land. So looking at <clears throat> easy to spot patterns, okay? Um, really the key thing is, is any time up or down a move stops where you don't have a zero by something or something by zero, it's an incomplete auction, okay? Even though the volume and the move, which you've seen a ton of examples of the last couple days I can show you guys, even though the volume has been strong in some of these bars, um, buyers are really unable to push past this level. You can actually see this on the footprint. So it's really just due to a greater number of uh, sell orders than it is buy, obviously. But um, the drying up in volume, that I'm actually going to show you a live example of this very thing today. Um, a drying up in volume and a subsequent reversal, which we saw today, could actually quite clearly be seen on the footprint, both the up uh, and at the bottom today of the market, uh, right around um, 1916.75. We actually saw the same thing. The, what makes this particular pattern even more powerful is if this pattern is a rocket in one direction or another, meaning that there has just been a huge move, there has been a big volume up bar, and it can be, and oftentimes, which is certainly the case recently, exhaustive moves for that particular short-term time frame. So it's an exhaustive, what I like to call an explosive move, sort of exhausts itself out, maybe an incomplete auction showing up at the top like you're seeing here, and then subsequent tests of that area show no water flow going off. Now, a lot of people will say, okay, great, I'm a beginner at this, Steve, and hey, this sounds all great. So basically, do I take the short right here? No, you don't. Okay, again, this is just the fine tuner of when to execute the trade. 
there's a whole pile of other things that need to be a confluence. You know, like, let's say this is the um, 36 level, <clears throat> which really held us most of the day today. Um, you know, yes, because it's more of an extreme look as far as an extreme of the value error highs or lows um, of either a time or a volume based count from the market profile chart. So let's look at another example. Okay, so in you know in 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 hindsight here, um, maybe it'd have been best for me to show four or five other bars before this, but we had an exhaustive move up into this area. Okay, we had a test uh, of the high, nothing going off on the order flow at the top, and two sell side imbalances. See this right here? Maybe hard to see on the screen, but. If you look, it's blue versus red, blue versus red, 12 by 238, 32 by 348. That's telling us that there's a imbalance. Now, it's hard to determine um, the imbalance, but I've set mine at 400%. So anytime I see this twice up against an area that's got a lot of other confluence, or there's a whole other bunch of high and low volume nodes that have come across. And let's just say this is the 1700 area in the past. Okay. Um, I'll probably take a crack at this short. Bunch of other factors, but you know, I'm going to show you some examples live today of why this took place. So essentially just, you know, knowing that no order flow is going off, it's an alert. It's, it's a bell ring. Does it mean you get short? No. Um, but it does mean that we may have another rotation back down, in which case we did. So we had a big flush. Uh, this is a good example of a exhaustive move. Now it had cooled itself back out. Yes, we popped back up. Probably got down near to some um, pretty heavy sell outside of you know Bollinger Band type um, or any standard deviation extension. So you know, normally you'll have a little bit of a snapback as we did. Uh, but one thing that um, somebody pointed out last uh, webinar that I ran, which was over a year ago, by the way. Um, that yes, this is an incomplete auction right here. And notice that that was actually somewhat of a magnet for a price to come back to it again. It didn't quite get there. But this is just a beautiful example of a short setup, okay? With over a 10 to 1 sell side imbalance, just boom, hit that right at the top of that bar, okay? And I'll show you again some live examples, but I want you guys just to see some um, slides I pulled from the past and um you know how it's showing up on the on the chart <clears throat> all right so um i don't like that example let's go to this next one here's a good one so this is a while ago <clears throat> but um it was a liftoff you could see that through the course of this exhaustive bar um we had a number of buy imbalances just ripping through it um, right after the exhaustion on the previous bar of a lot of selling volume. You can see how the delta for the day changed. This is this top line net number. It's cumulative for the day. So it's always changing depending on the volume that comes in. We had a rip, had a number of buy side. Um, imbalances that hit. <clears throat> this always keeps me a little weary. If I see a lot of these show up in a bar that just has lift off or sell off, you know, conversely, if it was a bunch of red down, we'd be, I'm usually a little concerned if, if it's into an area that's a big, big, low or high volume node on a long-term composite chart. Um, you know, I may take a crack at it because we did have a pretty decent sell hit. But notice the rotations weren't that much. I mean, barely got a five tick reversal, thus forming the next bar as soon as we came back up to just above the 94 area. And notice every time we pop back up, we had those cells, but we weren't rotating back down. Why? Because look at the, in some cases, almost a skipped print, right? This tells me, at least at this point, can't gauge the power of it because I've forgotten a lot about this particular day's pattern. But obviously, another time frame player stepped in and just started lifting. And the market just lifted off from that. So as we, and if you're wondering what that beeping is in the background, my data is up, updating. 
So looking through this rip, consequently, a couple of the sell side imbalances that hit the top um, and the rotations back. Now, here's one thing that's interesting. <clears throat> so we come back down to, um, you know, which I guess you certainly could draw a line at the 1696. This actually was a very big um, low volume node at the time on a long term composite. So we pushed with pretty decent volume, got above it, went positive on Delta for the day. <clears throat> Keep in mind, guys, I'm just walking you through this. I don't expect you guys to fully understand this at this point, but many, many examples at the beginning to give you guys an idea of how critical this tool is. Um, so we had a sell side imbalance literally capping the tops of almost these five bars, but yet no large rotations down. But I'm already on a high alert for the fact that there really isn't any. And sure enough, three times we came down here, we had a pretty significant buy side imbalance. Just looking at the algo showing up right here telling us that, just comparing essentially <clears throat> bids to offers through the 1696 pullback. And then we looked it up again. Now, for the scalpers, okay, again, I'm not a scalper. Used to be. Don't really do it anymore. I'd rather put a trade or two on a day and just let them ride through whatever role I can get out of it. Um, taking scales off along the way. But you can actually use this tool to scalp. So you know, you'd see that while we pulled back to 96, three times maybe a charm, right? Um, that a possibly another leg up was coming and you could have wrote it up for a few points. Here's another example. Possible exhaustion print, zero by 18. Anytime you see a big number, okay, we're four digits wide. Um, we want to see lower highs um, on this. So those are the slides. And let's jump into the live software just so we can see what took place. Uh, I'm actually going to scroll back, so bear with me a second here, to um, what went on here this would have helped us out. So let's go to low of the day. You know what? Let me just jump back here. See how we had, um, there was no sell side and balance up here, but you know, coming into the 1938, which was important, um, see how a little sell side came back up, really nothing going off on this, but then see, in, in you guys aren't seeing this print real time, but um, I guess I could switch to the crosshairs, but let's just look at um, the 446 versus the 1855 relation here. This is a little bit of a heads up that if we can't get back up to this area again, we're probably gonna sell off, okay? Boom, came back up to it twice, two, Sell side imbalances, one of uh, two, none with the exception of this one of real significant. You know, I always like to say I'm looking for a four to one or higher, but I'm not going to take a trade on a four to one. If I see like a 10 to one of something big or if there's a large exhaustion bar before that, like you're seeing here at the 1203, six, uh, five tick bar. Actually, I got it on six ticks right now. So six tick bar. Um, this is high alert for short. I actually did take the short and it paid off nice. So um, came back up against this area again. See how we're still, you know, didn't get much off of this, um, you know, because I was looking for a bigger move. So maybe I think I grabbed three points or some small contract size. So I didn't have a lot to leave on as runners. But as we came back up against the 27 area, um, you know, sure enough, boom. So notice down here, um, big exhaustive move. Okay, took us almost double the, the delta for the day. Let me just drop this window down here. <clears throat> took us for almost half the delta for the day. And um, let me get rid of this indicator. You can see this a little bit. I'd be darn near. Um, especially since the significance of the 14 to 16 area, I'd be on alert right now to flip this and potentially go long. Again, incomplete auction at the bottom. See that? 1933 by 444, incomplete auction. 
Um, does that mean we're going to come right back down immediately? No, but you're on alert that if we're coming into a big area, I'll be uh, actually a, a very low volume node on the composite, which I'm going to show you last. You're probably sick of hearing that. <laughs> um, but it attracted us back down to that area. So as we moved into there, um, you know, just getting kind of choppy. Not much to really read in the rest of this, but you can see how this is really helping. At least I hope you can see how this is really helping. Look at that. Another incomplete auction down there. 1327 today uh, on the time. Right down in 18. It's telling me that maybe we um, I mean, it's turn into a bit of a chop fest, but as far as getting down to um, the real low of the day here on 17, let me just drop back to that and see if I can find what I want to see at the top. Okay, so right here at the top, let me see if I can just expand this out so it's a little easier to see. All right, so at the high here, it's a pretty important high. See, we had a 10 to 1 sell side imbalance. So you could have taken a crack at there, especially we were coming into higher and a whole bunch of other stuff and as far as areas of confluence, including the profile. Um, but we came back up to it again. Notice nothing went off. Very little. Three contracts, essentially, were executed. So another chance, essentially, to take a shot at that. Um, for, you know, as we saw throughout the day, what the trend was down, right? So for trading with the trend, you know, we want to see a, a nice zip up um, and potentially this along with some other areas of confluence in order to try and continue to get uh, that rotation back down. So, all right, we're 50 minutes into this and um, let me take some questions. And again, guys, if, if you have... Um, certain levels of confusion around us, I, I would, uh, that's actually quite normal. I don't expect <clears throat> guys to learn this in one session. All right, uh, let's take a look at some questions here. What relation does a market profile chart have with a volume profile chart? There are, the market profile chart is really, as you're seeing here, it's where I start off the day. So it probably, as far as the homework sheet, you guys have a link to. Uh, I'm not going to open up and go through the homework sheet, but I'll tell you how my day works. So I come in. <coughs> Hopefully I'm well rested and, um, you know, my mind's focused on trading, you know, sort of that Zen thing I always like to try and do uh, as far as uh, meditation or some sort of yoga in the morning before I trade. I'll usually come in and um, I'll take a look at the composite first. So this is the composite. I want to see what's going on um, as far as the market. Okay. This is a day session two. I want to see where the high and low volume nodes are. <clears throat> this is all the business that has transacted in this area since the 9th of October 2013. So approximately two years ago of one minute data that we're looking at on this chart. This is the first thing I look at. I want to see where are the important areas. And I had somebody ask me the other day, why did the market stop at 1821? No surprise. Why is that on, you know, essentially crash day, right? Why do we stop right in this area? Look how huge this peak is. It's the biggest. And that's why the market stopped. Because there was so much business that transacted over the last two years at this level that a lot of the other time frame players, especially the long ones, and those that are short maybe covering or wanting to put cash to work, um, they're going to defend this position. Uh, this is one of those trades where you just step in and buy. <laughs> 
um, because it's a very big area. Okay, so we bounced off that, essentially formed a little triangle. You guys can see us forming here. Um, so I'll go through and look at this. I want to understand context. Okay, then maybe I'll take a look at the monthly profile, find out what's going on from just a time. Okay, again, so this is the relation of time spent versus volume. Okay, comparing these two. Again, all part of the exhaustive amount of homework I think you should be doing, prepping for each day. But once you guys start ripping through this, you can knock it out pretty quick. You can do it about maybe 10 or 20 minutes. Or you can do it the night before. Sometimes I'll print this stuff out and just put them on the nightstand. Study it as I'm falling asleep to uh, um, you know, some goofball television show. So the market profile chart and the long-term composite. And then I will move to the day chart. You can take a look at the week, but just in the interest of time here, take a look at the day chart. What's going on? You can condense this down using the preferences all the way to a single point if you want, or you could just hold it on the scale. What's going on? Where are all the naked POCs? Where's the business being done from the standpoint of the blue or red lines? Brown or red? Looking kind of blue. Uh, the brown or red lines um, on the chart. Hopefully that answers your question. Let me jump to the next one. Um, next question is, is the value areas is from Robert M. The value areas from the prior day, prior session. They are in just make sure I got that clear if I skipped over that. The value areas are designated by the magenta bar. This is for yesterday um, on the 21st. See the magenta bar? And the brown bar, maybe this is hard to see, is, is volume. So the volume value area high, which I had, which just is important to me. Um, I don't hold one value area any better um, than another. I, I want to weigh both of them the same. Um, if anything, we, especially if we spend a lot of time in one area, I maybe give it a little more weight. Whereas if we're just ripping through stuff, um, I'm going to be paying more attention to those high and low volume nodes than I am just yesterday's value or high or low. Why? Because this market is um, has amnesia from day to day. So you, you really have to have a focus on the long-term context of what's going on in the big picture charts. Again, the composite. All right, next question. And again, you guys can always send these questions to me. Uh, Jim, yeah, I have an actual track record. Um, <clears throat> in Bill L, this system is available in Ninja. Um, it's called Jigsaw. It's a plug-in for Ninja. And obviously, Ninja has their own market profile. But as far as the footprint, it's called Jigsaw. And it's a plug-in. Um, yeah, I have a track record, Jim. If you want, you can email me uh, for any of that. I don't send my track record out, so if you're looking for that, that's not something that's going to be emailed to you. Um, bid and asks are ever in the same line. This is always on tick. I'm not really sure the question, Peter. Maybe if you could re-ask that. Um, Yeah, Bill, you have to email that to me, Bill S., if you could, please. Just email me your address. I, my inbox um, serves as, um, let me just drop that up on the screen here. Go to the last one. That's my email. You guys can call my office, too, if you have any questions. I'm very old school, guys, so I want to talk everybody through before they purchase the course. It's not for everybody. I find I talk more people out of taking the course um, than I do going through it. Um, because I'm a realist, and if you're not willing to dedicate, as I like to call it, the, the 10,000 hours to master anything, um, I can certainly help to cut the learning curve on the course because I've gotten a couple of questions via email on that. Um, but, you know, as soup to nuts as the course is, um, it is not, um, and nor will it ever take the place of screen time uh, 
and uh, you know, really learning all this. But um, yeah, I'll send that to you. <clears throat> uh, Jigsaw has level two plugged into it. Yes. What is the average time in your trades? Average time in my trade? Oh boy. Um, recently <laughs> or long term? Long term, several hours. Recently, I don't know, ten seconds <laughs> to. Um, 20 seconds, I mean, you know, if you put enough contract size and you have a big enough account, um, you know, you can let some of these runners get, you know, 20, 30 points for you, just like they did last October, and now they're going this September, you know, two really good volatile periods of time. Um, but typically, in lower volatile periods of time, I have larger contract size on, and I have more patience. So I've, I've cut contract size way down, it's just normal risk uh, management. Um, but I want to hold the trades um, to get the scales I feel we can get out based on current volatility. I mainly trade the ES, and again, just my two cents, guys. All the people that I have coached and mentored, which is about 100 people over the last two years approximately, um, that I've at least been heavily involved with, um, I recommend it to every one of them that they learn trading the ES. I know there's other contracts and instruments, and there's some great stuff and other exchanges, and Yes, your X is great with the DAX and all that, um, but this is the largest volume. It is the biggest aggregate. It is the largest futures contract traded on the planet. I'm talking about the ES, the E-mini S&P. has about $100,000 in notional value, and you can trade the darn thing for you know anywhere from four to $5,000 in intraday margin. I don't recommend, um, or I say 400 to five thousand dollars, which I don't recommend trading an intraday margin at, at the four or five hundred level, but um, you know certainly want to have about ten or fifteen thousand dollars of money that you do not need in a futures account. Um, and I stress, do not need <laughs> um, to start trading. Um, you know, from one to three contracts, you know, using whatever execution dome you want. Um, so we go through a lot of that in the course. If you guys want to read into it, so. Let me make sure I'm getting all these questions answered. Did you see my first answer? Um, JW, no, I did not. Uh, but once I saw it break and the massive amount of volume and other time frame players that were stepping in once we crossed under the 2040 level, remember, think about how big that level was, right? So if you look at the composite, and we go back up towards the high, I mean, how big was this level? It's held us right under 2040, essentially 37 to, to 40. Uh, this has been a big level. It's also one of the highest, the lowest part of the balance area of the entire chunk of the last year, uh, year to date, I should say. Um, but it held us. Once we broke that and we had decisive volume on this break, I knew we were going to flush. I did not know. Uh, how far we were going to drop. But not a surprise um, that, yes, this was just a monster volume. It's probably a darn good day to put some long-term money to work, albeit we're probably going to go back down and test this area. It's hard to tell. Um, it seemed to me in the word on the street among a lot of my trader buddies is that a number of big funds that were wicked levered, keep in mind, guys, the leverage is now higher at close to 500% than it ever was at the peak of the market in 2007 and 8, okay? We have way more leverage on right now. And um, a lot of the funds uh, that were heavy levered, um, you know, they basically got margin calls and we flushed. Plus all the algos went nuts. So long-winded answer to your question, but it's just so much stuff you can glean from these charts as far as determining um, whether other time frames stepping in or not. Sorry, guys. When I go to the next question, I have to jump back to this. Firefox screen. So, <clears throat> um, long term, Bill, uh, about 71% winning trades if you follow our system. And that is only with the huge caveat that you spent significant time going through the course. Significant time. You've mastered it. You can recite this standing on your head after a case of beer type mastery. Okay? So, um, yeah, it's showing more downside, JW. There is a description of the course on your website. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of questions about this course. I mean, we should jump to a shameless plug here. 
So this is the course. <clears throat> Keep in mind, guys, this course is 20 hours um, of two different classes. So there's 40 hours of two full live classes up on the cloud. It's a private Microsoft OneDrive cloud. As soon as you buy it, um, you get access to the cloud and so forth. But um, I've been told by many people I could probably charge three grand for this course. But I'm trying to pay it forward. And which is the whole big reason I started this company because it does take up a lot of time. And let's face it, you know, selling courses and doing webinars and all that really doesn't amount to large income, uh, but it certainly has gotten me exposure um, in the trading community. It can help as far as raising capital for a new fund we're looking for or any of that stuff. And that's primarily the goal of doing this and, and pay it forward. So we're right on um, 24 after the hour. If you guys don't have any more questions, let's cut it there. And uh, you know, try and keep this under an hour. Anybody got any other questions on anything? Make sure I got all these questions answered. So I got that answered. That risk reward is if you want JW, you can send me an email on that. That risk reward question that's going to require major explanation. Yes, it's being recorded, Bill. It'll be up on my YouTube channel. I miss anybody's question. I think I got them all. I think I got them all, Josh. You think I missed anything? Yeah, watch the videos on the YouTube channel. Um, hey, you're welcome, guys. Dr. Kepler. Okay, write this down if you need to. Dr. Kepler. Forget the spelling. It's K E P P L E R. Guy's really good. Market profile teacher. Um, FT seventy one futures trader. It's Morad. It's got him on stage five. Problem is none of these guys have courses, but they teach a lot on. They have a really good YouTube channel. So you can see all that. You can watch stuff on my YouTube channel as well. Um, a lot of videos on this stuff, but it takes time, guys. You know, um, you know my uh, my most successful student probably makes about five hundred grand a year. Guy's killing it. He's trading CL, and man, I, I, I keep wanting to have him on here, but he doesn't give a rat's ass about talking about how successful he is. So, I mean, it, it can be done, but I mean, I got to tell you, Andrew is putting monster time into this. He's probably put 9,000 hours into mastering this craft over the course of, became student in 10, um, since 2010. So, I mean, this kid has just absolutely locked himself in his house for about a year going through all this. So it can be done if you genuinely have the desire to do this. And I'll leave it at that. Do you recommend Dr. Kepler over Jim Dalton? Um, Tom Alexander is really good, too. Um, I like Dalton. I really do. problem is Jim will put you to sleep. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, it's, uh, it's the key. So perseverance and capital preservation. All right, guys, I will bid you adieu. Jump back to the last page. We can cut out. That's all my contact info. You got any questions, give me a call. Send me an email for the slides. Thank you for the time.